All right, let's get started. We're gonna stand with our feet hip width apart, toes in, heels slightly out. Make sure your knees are straight but unlocked. And find that tucking of the tailbone straight from the get go. If you have too much arch on your low back, we're gonna tuck the tailbone a little bit to neutralize the curve. And also think of your front ribs, if they're popping up like that, you wanna pull them in through the abs. So tailbone tucked, abs pulling in, and then lengthening, lifting up with the chest, trying to get extension of the thoracic spine. So if you find yourself in this position, collapsing through the thoracic spine, we're gonna find some extension, lifting the heart up. We're also gonna work on the shoulders being drawn back and the head pulling back. Not lifting up with the chin, but lifting up with the sternum, lifting up with the base of the skull. And again, checking the knees, checking the tucking of the tailbone. From here, keeping this straight spine, now we're gonna work on hinging the hips back finding a stretch and tension on the hamstrings, on the glutes, and all the way along the paraspinal muscles. If you find that you're hyperextending too much, too much arch, that's where the tailbone tuck correction comes in. If you start to collapse through your thoracic spine, your upper spine, that's where the extension comes in. A little more round, a little more arch. Shoulders always drawn back as hard as you can. Pin those shoulder blades together. You can bring the shoulders back, you can bring the elbows back, you can bring the arms back, and externally rotate. Externally rotate the shoulders. Check the hinge, check the, check the tucking of the tailbone. You wanna feel your back body working. If you feel pressure here, most likely, you need to tuck a little bit more. Try to find the tension on the front. Couple more breaths here. Maybe hinging the hips a little further back. And then come up to standing, shake that off. We're gonna try it again. And we wanna make sure that we get that clean hinge. We don't wanna be bowing where it looks like a hinge, but the hips stay over the heels. We wanna be hinging the hips back so that we get into the hamstrings, into the posterior chain. So again, from this position, <clears throat> with the toes in, with the heels out, with the knees slightly bent and the tucking and the extension and the head in position with the shoulders and the arms to the side, let's hinge all the way back, check our alignment here, knees, hips, tuck or untuck depending on what will make this low back curvature shape as it's meant to naturally and the same thing for the thoracic spine so we're drawing the shoulders back and also extending you should feel like your heart is shining upwards without feeling that you're actually doing that with your back head in position not lifting with the chin Keep the chin in, head back, shoulders back, arms to the side. And once you feel like you have confidence in your position here, you could try integrating. So from standing, hinging back as far as you can, keeping the integrity of the pose. And again, you could do this with the arms in this long wing position, or you can bend into a short wing position. Either way, shoulders back, elbows back, hands back, You could even do a one breath per movement here. Again, just keep correcting yourself in all these alignment points. Check when you're standing, check when you're hinging. Maybe two more. And shake that off. All right, we're gonna do a little mobility for the thoracic spine. So first, Come back to the starting position, standing upright. Focus on that length and simply turning from the feet 
up the hips, up the spine, all the way up the head. So the head is turning back to look behind you or even behind the opposite shoulder. Now the trick here is that all those alignment points that we talked about are gonna be in play here. So we mentioned a little bit of tucking, extension of the thoracic spine, the shoulders thrown back, even a little bit of a hinge with the knees slightly bent. What this is doing is twisting the vertebrae and creating mobility all the way up the spine. Just a few of these ones. And come back to center. And we're gonna do now shoulders. So just a few shoulder circles rolling them back. And a few shoulder circles rolling them forward. And for all the exercises, go back again. We're gonna think about these three ranges of motion. So most people have shoulders forward and up and internally rotated. So we're gonna work mostly with shoulders back, down, and externally rotated. Whether you have your hands here, here, or even here, always send those shoulders at least back and down and externally rotated too, if possible, depending on the exercise. Okay, now we're gonna go on the ground and we're gonna work with shoulder mobility and spinal mobility. So come into an all fours, palms open, knees below the hips, hands below the shoulders. This will be a flat back right here. We're gonna do a few cat cows and we're gonna focus on differentiating three sections of the spine. We got the lower, the lower back, we got the upper back, and we got the neck, the cervical spine at the top. So what we're gonna do is first, do a nice series of clean cat cows. We're gonna inhale, tailbone up, belly drops, we're arching the low back, extending, thoracic arching again through the neck and then tuck the tailbone, rounding the low back, rounding the upper back, rounding the back of the neck, tucking the chin in. And we're gonna move from the tailbone to the head. So the head moves last. Inhale, tailbone up, rounding low back, mid upper back, through the back of the neck. And again, head last. So first, tucking the tailbone, then rounding, mid back, upper back, and the neck last. We're not giving too much thought to the shoulders yet. Just focus on the movement of the spine in one direction and the other. Let the shoulders stabilize naturally as they do. Now we're gonna come back to center on the next one. Just come back to that neutral flat back tabletop position. And now we're gonna work on the shoulders. Just a very simple retraction and protraction of the shoulders, meaning shoulders back, shoulders forward. It should feel like the shoulder blades are gonna touch. You could pin a pencil between the shoulder blades and then the shoulder blades are gonna move out to the sides. You can keep your spine straight. We're not folding or moving the spine anymore. Now we're keeping that neutral spine and going up and down with the shoulders. A few times. So now we got the shoulder movement isolated. And now we're gonna come back to the spine and we are trying to get the same vertical motion but instead of with our shoulders, we're gonna do it with our thoracic spine. So you can see those two movements look slightly different. This one I'm doing now is retraction and protraction of the shoulders. It's a rhomboid serratus muscles working against each other. And here we're doing a flexion and extension of the thoracic spine. How do we know it's a thoracic spine extension? because it's not on my neck and it's not on my low back. You might get a little bit of both when you start, but eventually you'll be able to 
get it clean. And of course, there'll be a little bit of the shoulder retraction and protraction, but again, we're looking for mobility. Once you got that going and you feel confident about that, we're going to try it on our knees. So again, sit it here. We're not doing low back flexion extension and we're not doing the neck either. We're going to try to keep it from, let's say, a little higher than the belly button, lower than the clavicle. So it's here. You could even use your hands like I am right now to get a sense of thoracic mobility. And after you do a few of these ones, maybe a little twist to one side and a twist to the other side. Okay. Let's go to child pose for a moment. So child pose with the big toes, the knees wide. And we'll just give ourselves a little rest here. Chin in, everything heavy to the floor. And again, we're gonna do a little extra mobility here. So let's walk the hands torso over the right leg. This will help stretch the left side of the paraspinal muscles. So low back, mid back, upper back. A few breaths here, try to get heavy to the floor. And come back to center, come back to center and hold it for a moment here just so you can reset the spine again. Reach far with your hands so you can stretch your armpits, sink the hips down to the heels and then again walk now to the left side and get heavy use your breath to stretch even more the tissues expand with the inhale and on the exhale try to soften and get heavy to the ground Couple more breaths here. Come back to center again. Take your time here to reset. And let's come back up. Let's come back up to our feet. We're gonna do a little bit of work for the legs. So this is gonna be useful for people who have a pattern of externally rotated feet. This is why we always talk about toes in, heels out. This exercise is gonna be with the right foot forward and the left foot back to start and choose from the get-go again. Toes in, heels out, looking especially to the back foot. We're gonna be very mindful of our hip alignment. So three dimensions of the hip, up, down, forward, back, and then we got that tucking of the tailbone or tilting that we've been talking about. Find those three dimensions. And then from the hips up, everything else is the same. We're gonna go straight into a hinge here so we can feel those glutes and external rotators working here. The external rotators are stretching and the glutes are loading. So we're trying to load on that, keeping the hips even, upper body again, thoracic spine extending, arm position, long wing or short wing. We're going to hold it just a little bit here and then we'll switch sides. So when you're ready, left foot forward, right foot back, look at your feet, Turn them slightly in, set your knees slightly bent, but straight. So we're not bending the knees. We're not locking them either. Micro bend. Check the three alignment points of the hips. Long spine. And load into that left leg. We're pushing.
pushing the hips back, lifting the heart forward and up. Position for the arms and just hold it and breathe and check your alignment. And step forward. <clears throat> All right, shake that off. We're gonna go on the ground, face up, and we're gonna do a little work for the core. A strong core, whether it's lower core or upper core on the front, will allow us to tuck the tailbone into these positions. So very easy here, we come into our back. You could have your arms to the side or chest and belly. We're gonna <clears throat> flex the ankles, trying to point the toes towards our knees. Toes in, heels out, knees together. So we're sealing the legs, we're zipping them up. And from here, heels barely, barely touching the ground. No weight on the floor, but contact with the heels. We're gonna drag them all the way, trying to do our best to not lift the heels high. And notice what happens here. As the legs go out, we're gonna tend to hyperextend again, create that arch. We wanna try to avoid that. So bring those heels back. And this time, let's crush the spine down. Flex your core and squeeze your spine so that there's no space. And let's do that again. Heels reach out. No space. Core action, chin in, shoulders down. And again, as you bring those heels back, don't let the spine pop. Bring them as close as you can. And again, extend the heels out, toes in, heels out, knees together the whole time. And we're just moving through this. Listening to the sound of the heels touching the floor, scraping the floor, or barely hovering over it. No space here. All in the front, shoulders back, Chin in, long spine, crushing the spine, lower spine down to the ground. Let's do one more. Okay. And then finally here, we're going to separate the feet just a couple inches. Keep the knees together. Tuck the tailbone and lift the hips up, keeping the tailbone tucked, still have some tension on the abs, on the hip flexors, on the front side. But as we lift the hips, you can touch with your hands, we also engage the low back muscles. Now, if we don't engage the core here, we would be dropping the tailbone and hyperextending, potentially feeling a little compression there. But if we tuck the tailbone, now we're working both sides, front and back. And this should be the alignment, the sensation we have when we're hinging the hips back so that we're not hyperextending, but we're also not collapsing through the low back. Let's take one big breath here. Exhale, vertebra by vertebrae, roll your spine down, and we're gonna do a little Shavasana here, a little final resting pose. Just stretch the legs out. <clears throat> arms out to the side, palms up, and we'll just rest here for a little bit. Letting go of our bodies, letting go of the breath, just watching. Letting the feet be heavy, legs heavy, hips heavy, torso heavy, shoulders, hands, and head, everything sinking. Give yourself to the earth for a few breaths. Watch your breath rising and falling. Keep 
Keep watching the breath rising and falling, eyes closed. Heavy, heavy, heavy. Staying here for as long as you like. 